I think brave, wise, and kind were three words that were used to describe June Caldwood, for whom this lecture is, is held in honor of. I think those three, those, those, the same three words could be used to describe Kathy and, and the presentation tonight. And, and I would be uh, a poor, a poor uh, accolade or, or a poor follower of Kathy if I didn't tell you about a few things that are happening at City Hall that require your attention. The first one um, has to do with, with Toronto community housing. When the, the board was collapsed, uh, and collapsed with a great deal of, of, of anger and passion by, by the current mayor and his administration. Uh, many people on the floor of council, including the mayor and the brother of the mayor, and the folks that uh, went on to, 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 to take the reins, or the single person that took over Toronto Community Housing, said that they would not sell public housing. And I can tell you at next week's uh, executive meeting, uh, which the mayor chairs on Tuesday, 22 homes, some with people living in them, will be sold and will be moved forward for sale. We cannot solve this problem by shrinking the amount of housing in the city. Your letters, your phone calls to the mayor, 397 Ford, he answers them apparently, but your calls and, and your voice need to be heard on, these, uh, on this issue. We cannot sell housing before we house people first. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is I got a call a few weeks ago, and I think Kathy will uh, like to hear this, from a, a resident in a luxury condominium who had moved into the condominium only to find that the previous resident had had bed bugs. He picked them up, on, they think, on a, on a trip abroad and, and was furious and had to spend thousands of dollars and many sleepless nights and, and at pushed to the edge of, 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 uh, of great distress uh, just trying to deal with this issue. And he came to the office with an idea that we should not only map where bed bugs are present in the city and put it up on a web website, but we actually should register the properties where they've been found so that no one moves into a building without asking a landlord, have you fixed the problem? And what this would do is twofold, I think. One, it would define the issue as not just an issue that, that, that plagues folks living on the margins of, of our society, under the shelter blankets, and the children that sleep under the shelter blankets are particularly, particularly susceptible. But what we would start to do is show that the problem has in fact leaped from the shelter system into the social housing system, into the private housing stock, and in the luxury housing stock. And I think if we could see it as a city and also hold landlords and condominium corporations accountable, we would start to realize that this is a challenge that all of us have a stake in solving. Because it is a plague which is silent in many quarters, but is driving people to distraction and distress in virtually every corner of the city. And we need action. And that brave soul is coming forward to the Toronto Board of Health to demand such a registry and demand such an action which, which above and beyond providing the resources to deal with the issue, I think will define it in a way that makes it all of our problem instead of just the problem of a few people that, we, that, 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 as I said, tend to have their voices marginalized or silenced. And then the final piece is the new harmonized zoning bylaw. Last council, despite our work to try and include rooming houses and licensed rooming houses as of right across the city, uh, it was stripped away from the harmonized zoning bylaw and sort of punted off into the future. There is a condition existing in, in parts of the city outside the downtown core where rooming houses are still legal and still licensed and still uh, a permitted use of, of, of single family homes in neighborhoods that you sort of might identify as priority neighborhoods where we've seen families move into the apartments that were built for singles and live six or seven people to a one bedroom apartment. But in the family homes that adjoin those neighborhoods, we're seeing singles move into those properties that families can't afford to live into. And you're seeing 10 and 15 and 20 people living in illegal rooming houses in neighborhoods that were designed not for low-income people, not for single people, but in fact for families. It's put children on the edge of neighborhoods far away from schools. It's put singles in the middle of neighborhoods far away from transit and jobs. And we need to establish in the city a licensing regime and a permission right across the city to deliver not just rooming houses in a safe and affordable way, but the supportive housing components that also attend to that. Your councillors, mostly from the suburbs, where rooming houses, even this week at council, uh, are being challenged at the OMB on a regular basis. Suburban councillors in particular need to change their position on this issue and need to legalize and make safe this form of housing, which is an effective way of dealing with the issue while we still push towards more affordable housing be built by all levels of government. If none of them will do it, we have to find a way in Toronto alone. We cannot let this crisis, this emergency continue. So those are three concrete things you can do at City Hall that will support the work that Kathy has not only led and inspired, but has spoken to tonight. And I would thank you 
from the bottom of my heart if you could do it not just for, for us in this room, but for the next person that finds himself out on the street corner with nowhere to go. Those are the strong words and the tough words and the, and the political words, uh, as poetic as they may have been. I would like to now introduce a Common Thread Community Chorus. This is a group that uh, sings with their heart and with a great deal of soul and, and sings right across the city on the issues of social justice and, and the joy that they are going to fill this room with, uh, uh, hopefully, is, is the joy that will propel us into the actions required to solve the problems that Kathy spoke about tonight. So if I could welcome the choir to the stage. And for those doing homework, uh, apologies, but uh, take a break and enjoy the music. We are a gentle, angry people, and we are singing, singing for our lives. Young and old. We are young and old together, and we are singing, singing for our lives. We are young and old together, and we are singing, singing for our lives. Women and men. We are women and men together, and we are singing, singing for our lives. We are women and men together, and we are singing, singing Why my sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The other night, dear, as, as I, I lay sleeping, I dreamt I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. So I hung my head and cried. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine.